Roaming is a Los Angeles-based premium lifestyle brand that is motivated by nature. Roaming features high-quality, earth-friendly dog products made from renewable and natural materials like their bio-based and 100% compostable biodegradable dog poop bags. These bags really are awesome. I've been using their bags for a few months now and I love the durability, the way they feel, and the fact that they are good for the earth. They also have a special discount for our listeners. Use code VermontDog to get 20% off your first purchase, including 20% off the first three orders if you sign up for one of their poop bag subscriptions. They also have some beautiful leather leashes made right here in the USA. You can check them out at roaming.com. That's R-O-M-N-G dot com. Time again for Talking Dogs with Ian Grant, owner of Vermont Dog Boarding and Behavior, VFW Drive Hyde Park. It's the show that delves into the training, socializing, behavior, nutrition, and wellness of your dog. And brought to you by Guy's Farm and Yard, locations in Morrisville, Montpelier, Williston, and St. Albans. And we're back with the trainer, Ian Grant, and this week, the effects of a lack of of stimulation. Now, folks who have been listening to this program for all of these many years, over six, probably are familiar with the term stimulation. But for those rookies who may be joining us for the first yeah. time, uh, what is stimulation and uh, not having enough of it? Why is that bad? I think we can define stimulation as something that kind of that works the dog's brain in a healthy way. Not so much just recessed, straight-up excitement all day, every day as far as excitement. I mean, that's that's mm. good when a dog is playing, obviously, and, and we have no problem with that. Mm. But we also want to look at mental stimulation. Is there problem-solving of something of some sort going on? Is there actual training sessions, you know, five minutes at a time? Is there something that we're doing with our dog on a regular basis that fulfills them, that challenges them? And really, it also increases, you know, your your bond with your dog, too. So is the reason why our dog is not getting stimulation has to be put on the owner for a good part of it, don't you think? I think the majority of it. Yeah. I mean, the <laughs> right dog, up to 99.9% of it. Yeah, the dog doesn't have the gym club, you know, that yeah. can do all this stuff, you know. you, you gotta you got to do the work for it. Yeah, and, you know, for us here in Vermont, when we kind of head off into the winter months here and there's mm. not as much light out, this is, I remember in the past, this is where I would get a lot of calls for dogs that are fighting each other at home because they're not, not getting, getting out as much and they're not getting that stimulation. Yeah. And so uh, this is this is when uh, bad things can happen. And yeah, it is totally 100% on the owner. Yeah. Now, how, how bad can it be? I mean, dogs fighting with each other, but then it can be between dog and owner too. It can become dog to owner stuff. Your couch can get annihilated. The trim around the doors can get annihilated. The garbage get, is getting into... If you really look at this from a a perspective of a dog getting bored and trying to find something to do, if you have a dog that's trying to find something to do, chances are they're not going to make a good decision. (laughs) Right. (laughs) At least, and I have to say this from my perspective, like I don't have people coming in, dog owners to come in and say, hey, look at how good my dog is. I don't have any problems. I don't see those people. No. I I see the people that come in and go, I have a problem. You know, my dog is doing X, Y, and Z. And so when we look at this, you know, destruction, frustration, also dogs that bark a lot too, just at the drop of a hat because they're just so bored. And yeah, then you get into the aggression part of it too, where some dogs, sometimes dogs will just fight just because it's something to do. Mm. And that, that can get ugly. Yeah. Yeah, It can get ugly. And then it just, it just starts this long road of recovery. But uh, this is, this is what lack of stimulation can do. So owners should see the telltale signs of this by just what you were describing about the aggression and uh, just getting into things. So is this something that can carry over? I mean, is it just as easy as, okay, we're going to get the dog more stimulated. I get to pay more attention to the dog, but can it get to a point where, well, it's uh, it's going to take a lot of work to get them out of it. I think that really d- just comes down to the breed and the energy of the dog. I remember when we first had Fitz or first got Fitz. So he's he'll be two in February now. But you know when he's getting around the five, six, seven month age, I could see him going in and out of our back door, like to our fenced in area, a lot. <laughs> and I'm like checking he's, it out. He is well, and, and also he was. Just looking for something to do. He was in and out, in and out, you know, scratching to go in, scratching to, to go out. And I just, I remember looking at it going, you have more energy than the other two do. And I need to do a little bit more. 
And I do. And and I, I know for him, I need to up my game here. He loves fetch, so we do that, you know, as much as I can. But he needs that extra energy exerted. Otherwise, it's going to turn into something else. And so oftentimes, you know, early signs of this are when dogs get restless, when they just can't settle on their own. They just have too much energy. And aside from puppies, if your dog is getting the zoomies in the evening, that's another telltale sign that they we need to just do a little bit extra with them. Just And especially, as you said, during these uh, colder months still to come, that it's very easy to kind of let it go. But there are things you can do in the house. I mean, they don't have yeah. to, doesn't have to be overly like walking around the up and down the stairs for an hour just uh, just to kind of get them engaged. Yeah. You know, we I think we recently talked about things that you can do inside your house to make a little obstacle course and mm-hmm. walk them around objects and do some slalom work. This doesn't have to be at 100 miles an hour either. You know, some dogs appreciate learning (laughs) slowly and easily. And there's other dogs like, you know, Australian Shepherds and Border Collies. They just want to go. Teach me while I'm running. Right. And and I can make this happen. But, uh, yeah, when it gets darker earlier, we just have to make sure that we're keeping that same same routine going for our dogs. Mm, For sure. Back with our question from the doggy bag in just a moment here on Talking Dogs. Are you looking for gear that can keep up with your active and adventurous dog? Look no further than Synology Warehouse. They specialize in equipping the modern canine with a distinguished, overbuilt gear that's built to last from home to horizon. From premium collars and leashes to rugged outdoor gear, they have everything you need to keep your dog comfortable and safe no matter where your adventures take you. I've been using their Biothane slip leashes for months now and I love them. They have a nice feel, a good grip, and they clean very easily. Use coupon code VERMONT to receive 10% off your purchase. Head over to Synology Warehouse on Etsy today and give your dog the gear they deserve. Synology Warehouse, overbuilt gear that's built to last from home to horizon. Back to Talking Dogs with Ian Grant from Vermont Dog Boarding and Behavior, VFW Drive High Park. Check out his website, vermontdogboardingandbehavior.com. The question this morning, Ian, is, boy, this is a book. Yes. I have two golden retrievers, and often we have the same off-leash dog run up to us with excitement that's way over the top. One of my dogs wants to calm it down, and it can get very intense. The owners of the excited don't keep their dog on a leash, so it makes it hard to control mine on a leash. What? Can I do? Yeah, that, you, you don't want the dog to be making the decisions here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the other part of it, too, is, you know, one of these golden retrievers is trying to calm down the other. That's instinctual. You, mm-hmm. you know, they're trying to tell that other dog, look, you are way over the top. This is just too much. We don't we don't live like this. <laughs> Dogs self-correct themselves? Yeah, yeah absolutely. If you have, if you, especially if you have two that have lived together for a while. Yeah, well, and so it's funny you mentioned that. I've got a video on right at the top of my Facebook page. It's had over 2 million views on it, and it's one dog calming another dog down. And so this is what they naturally want to do. But there, there's so many, I don't want to go too far down the rabbit hole here. Yeah. Really what this boils down to is that this over-the-top excited dog needs to be on a leash. Right. That would that, be the first thing. The, the owner is uh, not uh, paying attention to his own dog. Yeah. Probably talking on the cell phone, drinking the coffee, just and oblivious to the situation. <laughs> right. But oftentimes, too, you can look at this 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 scenario and go, wow, why are the, why is that one golden retriever being so aggressive to my dog? Meaning yeah. I have my dog's just a happy dog, but oftentimes this excitement is looked at as a positive thing. It's just happy to see another the, dog. Yeah, and the golden's like, we don't act this way. You're 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 <laughs> you're, you're mani- out of line. Yeah, you're maniacal right now. Yeah. And so as far as what this person can do, really just walk away and keep walking away yeah. and just this is you you pick your battles. Un- unless you have a bulletproof dog that's just going to sit there while this other excited dog is running around like a crazy dog, there's not a lot you can do other than just walk away because you're probably not going to sit there and educate that <laughs> that dog owner on what's appropriate and what isn't. Because if they don't have it on a leash, then uh, chances are they're not really the best of uh, keeping your, their dog behaving. Yeah. The flip side of this is when I see this situation, depending on how often this happens, this excited dog runs up to other dogs off leash, that dog will get bitten at some point. And then it'll be that dog's fault that did the biting because Mm. of this. But so we're not correcting this excitement. It happens over and over again. A dog will correct that dog in probably an inappropriate way at some point. And now you have an issue and and then behaviors start to spiral out of control. Mm. So 
it's a this is a this is a gnarly situation. Yeah, for sure. That's it. You're not getting dinner tonight, and I'm doing the disciplining. <laughs> the heck with the owner. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> if you have a question for Ian, you can email him directly to info at vermontdogboardingandbehavior.com. Next week, the topic is when a dog owner says, I've tried everything. Well, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> That's the I used to say that, but I'm like, yeah, it comes off a little rude. I'm not gonna yeah. I'm not gonna say that anymore. Yeah. But uh, there's side effects of this. Let's just say that before we go too deep into it <laughs> okay. as to when I hear that. All right. We'll we'll save it for next week. Yes. On Talking Dogs with Ian Grant, brought to you by Guys from Yard with locations in Morrisville, Montpelier, Williston, and St. Albans. And for the trainer Ian Grant, I'm Roland LeJoy, and we are talking dogs.